ballistics. Ballistics is the science and mechanics that deals with launching, flight behavior, and effects of projectiles. There's a lot of stuff involved with ballistics. The projectile is any object projected into space by an exertion of forces. Uh, the projectile can be anything thrown or flying through the air. Balls, arrows, bullets, artillery shells, rockets, paper wads, rubber bands. All those things are examples of projectiles. All right, trajectory. The trajectory is the flight path that a moving object follows through space as a function of time. So on the right, you can see a screenshot of the Angry Birds video game. In each of those lines where you're aiming for a um, particular target, each of those lines would be the trajectory. Forensic ballistics involves analysis of bullets and bullet impacts to determine information about the firearm, ammunition, the bullets, and the cartridge cases. So there are four categories of ballistics. There's internal ballistics. That's the study that processes accelerating projectiles. It focuses on the science of gunpowder and nitrocellulose, other propellants, and You see the recipe down below for how to make gunpowder. Um, it's not a complicated process. It's a little bit dangerous, but um, this would be the old school gunpowder in its earliest form. Nowadays we have smokeless gunpowder and we use um, some other substances to achieve achieve uh, gunpowder, but uh, this is what would have been used uh, hundreds of years ago. This uh, produces a lot of smoke, and uh, also it's pretty tough on metal. It corrodes it and stuff like that. But Okay, so the next type of ballistics is transitional ballistics. Transitional ballistics is the study of projectiles as they transition from unpowered flight refers to the projectile at the moment it begins movement until the point of its full speed. So as soon as it starts moving because the, the gunpowder has exploded until it's at its fastest point. That would be transitional ballistics. Okay, Not to be confused with external ballistics, what we're going to talk about next. Transitional from the point that it begins to move until its fastest point. Okay, external ballistics. Now, this is a little bit different from the previous one. This is the study of the passage of the projectiles in flight, so as it passes in flight. Um, so it focuses on the projectile after it's left the barrel of the firearm and reaches maximum speed. Transitional is from, from start moving to its fastest point. External ballistics is from the point it leaves the barrel until its fastest part. Now this video goes pretty quick. It's not as slow as the other one, but we're gonna um, click this and watch this real fast. There's the bullet flying out. See the shock wave. Bullets actually go faster than the speed of sound. And you can see lots of um, videos online if you'd like to see more of that. Pause the video as you need. We're getting ready to go to the next slide. Terminal ballistics. Um, terminal is the final part. So it's the study of the projectile and its effects as it ends its flight. The end of a flight often occurs as it smashes against a surface or an object. Um, terminal ballistics is really important uh, with the military. Um, so, for example, they may need to design a weapon that after it impacts the ground, maybe that it's able to shoot through the ground into underground bunkers where where a enemy is hiding um, before it explodes. 
Um, sometimes they might want something to explode before it hits. And so um, they would study terminal ballistics. All right, so this video, you're going to see three things. A bullet hit a steel target. You're going to see a bullet hit a jug of water. And then you're going to see a rocket propelled grenade break through drywall and um, explode. And we'll watch this twice. Okay, you can see that the soft lead just explodes as it hits the hard steel. And all the kinetic energy, all that speed that that bullet has just transfers that energy throughout that jug of water. It just, that bullet just now came out. Here's the RPG, goes through the drywall and explodes. We'll watch that again. I'll often get re requests to play that twice. Wow. So these are all examples of terminal ballistics. Now we're going to get into the stuff that you're much more familiar with, ballistic fingerprinting. And so ballistic fingerprinting has nothing to do with fingerprinting like you think of fingerprinting your fingers. So this uh, refers to a set, many techniques, that rely on marks that firearms leave on bullets to match a bullet to the gun it was fired with. So ballistic, ballistic fingerprinting does not work with shotguns, for example, because um, shotguns, one, they have a smooth barrel, so they're not going to leave grooves and lands from the rifling, and they often just contain a bunch of shot, a lot of small pellets. And as you saw in that previous video, the shot rides in this plastic sleeve, and that plastic sleeve goes down the tube and it doesn't really leave and leave the um, bullets and all the shot until after it has left the after it has left the barrel of the gun. So, for that reason, shotguns can't really use ballistic fingerprinting in terms of rifling. Maybe breech markings. We'll talk about that in a moment. All right. So, one of the most obvious differences would be a gross difference um real simple so this 48 caliber bullet that's the one all the way to the left in the picture you could not put that bullet into a gun that was made to shoot let's look at the 22 bullet all the way to the right that bullet would not fit into a 22 rifle okay so that is a gross difference 22 a 22 um, caliber cartridge would not fit into a 45 caliber cartridge. So that would be a gross difference. Okay, the striation patterns, these are the grooves and lands from the rifle barrel. And so as the bullet is fired through this rifle barrel, the raised and lowered spirals of the rifle etch fine grooves and we call those striations into the bullet. And so it's this that can match a bullet with the barrel it was fired through. In the bottom right, you can see that the bullet on the left, the striation patterns go up and to the right. So they call that a right twist. The one that's all the way to the right, you can see that the stripes on the bullet go up and to the left. Different manufacturers use different 
um, rifling techniques. Some spin the drill to the right, some spin the drill to the left. And so this leads to this right twist or this left twist. And you also can see they're two different sizes, and that would be another example of a gross difference. So this would be a um, the striations of two bullets that match. So basically, what they have in these crime labs, they'll have a microscope, and they'll have two eyepieces, and each eyepiece goes to a different um, magnification. So one might point to a bullet that you put on the left, another would point to a bullet you put on the right. And so you twist and turn the bullets until you get a matching of the bullets. And so you can see here that these stripes, they follow all the way down. Every time you shoot that gun out of that, uh, every time you shoot a gun, you're going to get that pattern. Now it's going to be a little tedious and you're going to have to work hard at matching them up. But as you can see here, these two different bullets, they match. Okay, there's two types of striations, two, two characteristics. One's a class characteristic, and so that's going to distinguish patterns from a manufacturer or a certain model of a firearm. So manufacturers will have different types of guns, that'd be the model. So Smith & Wesson Company, they use a right-hand twist. Uh, the Colt Company uses a left-hand twist. So if you found a gun that had a left-hand twist, you already know that it's not a Smith & Wesson rifle. And so that would be a class characteristic. The individual characteristics have to do with that particular gun. So um, there could be wear and tear in the rifle, maybe an old rifle that is used often, um, would have its own characteristics. And um, it could also be the, the imperfections as it was manufactured. You're gonna see a difference in the rifling uh, let's say they were using a drill, right? Let's say this drill could be used a thousand times on a thousand different guns. Well, you're going to have a difference in the patterns between the first time that drill was used and then the 700th time that drill was used. And so that would be an individual characteristics. Um, if guns were altered um, by shortening the barrel, if it was scraped with a steel brush, would be an improper way to clean a firearm. Um, it would scratch the inside and you would you would see imperfections like that also. Okay, so we're getting ready to get into um, something that would have been a lab, and I miss you guys. I wish we could have been together to do this because we had a lot of good lab activities for this, a lot, a lot of fun, short activities. One of them, we would have been looking at breech markings on um, fired cartridge cases. So we have a lot of cartridge cases, and we were going to identify, based upon the marks on those cases, which one was the crime crime scene um, bullet? We'd look at the crime scene bullet and we try to match it to suspected guns that we think were used in a crime. And so we're getting ready to see a video, two slides from now, of how um, this one's uh, basically it's how a Glock works. Um, it's a good video because you're going to see how the firing pin hits and the mechanism that's going to cause the um, the extractor to to extract the cartridge out of the gun and um, the the ejector, and you're going to see all that. And every gun is going to have its own individual uh, process, and it's going to leave a very unique mark on it. And so, the chamber and the breech of the firearm, they're they're going to start marking these cartridges. And this is a lot easier to identify than bullets. It makes sense because these just fall and hit the ground. Bullets are flying faster than the speed of sound and they smash against stuff and get deformed. And so different brands of firearms leave specific markings from the firing pin. So this would be another um, uh, class characteristic. So on the left, you see Smith & Wesson firing pins, and on the right, that column, you see Glock firing pins. Well, what do you notice about them? That's right, the ones on the left are round, and the ones on the right, they have this rectangular shape with a with like a, a, a dent on the inside. Well, um, if you find a cartridge case that has that round mark on the inside, you know it wasn't a, 
you wasn't a Glock because Glocks leave a very particular shape. So different brands of firearms leave specific markings from the firing pin. So when you do shoot, you are going to be leaving this gunpowder residue. So this gunpowder residue, after you fired a gun, you're going to be able to find it on your hands, your clothes, people that were near you, and you're going to be able to determine the patterns that are on the people and determine were they the one that shot the gun, were they just close to it, what happened. So as the gunpowder is being burned, the there are all these like particles that are that are leaving and we call this the gunshot residue and so the police they're going to swab um, the area of your hand and they're going to see if they can find gun gunpowder on you and there's going to be these microscopic burns on you as well your hands your clothes and all this stuff they could find that under the microscope so you couldn't just wash and then and then not have evidence on it there's other things they can do even if you washed so particular guns will have a particular pattern um, you, like I said you can determine how close or far away people were and you can see this was a revolver um, you can see all of the smoke that was coming out of this particular firearm and that smoke still has burning particles and it's going to get on your hands and clothes and people near you so they can test for it. Um, this is a, another image. Um, you don't have to write this down. Uh, just the image where you can see the firing pin, the ejection port, and all the things that are going on. You can see gunpowder residue coming out of this cartridge. It's going to be coming out the back. It's going to be coming out the front, most obviously. Okay. I'm going to switch the slide. So the grease test, the grease test, I think that's how you say it. And so basically um, it's a chemistry test and they just put a little solution on a cotton swab and you can determine if there's burned gunpowder on it. All right, serial number recovery. Now this is some cool stuff. I'm gonna upload some videos for you to watch. Um, it's called Backyard Ballistics where a guy does all kinds of experiments at home and. He's a professional, but he's going to show you an example of serial number recovery. So criminals, they'll file away the serial numbers on guns, and um, they don't want people to know, like, who bought the gun and just try to hide their criminal activities. Well, that doesn't work because um, when they stamp these serial numbers, the metal beneath it is, is weakened and compressed, and you can remove those just by adding an acid and it will dissolve the soft metal first, and then you get the serial numbers back. So watch the video that I'm going to link to this to see that. It's really neat. And so this acid etching method, method here, you can see that the serial number was recovered here off this firearm using that. Um, this is useful for like stolen car parts and stuff like that where um, they put serial numbers on on car parts you might wonder why would people steal car parts because lamborghini engines are expensive ferrari engines are expensive and so there's a black market for them and you can trace back to um stolen and chopped up cars so there's another there's another lab we were going to do and it was using the acidified peroxide method of recovering bullet excuse me recovering actual fingerprints of people who have touched bullet bullets as they were loading them into the gun and so you could take a, a a cartridge that had been fired use this acidified peroxide method um and you could get the fingerprint to like appear on the cartridge case all right trajectory that word is ricochet a fun word and bullet holes so basically um, they have laser pointers they use um, long sticks strings to find out where bullets well they know where they hit but they try to figure out where it came from and so they use this to triangulate where the shooter was standing 
and how tall they might have been. Were they walking, running, moving? Um, what position were they in as they fired? And um, pretty useful stuff for, for solving a crime. So.